What's going on everybody? It's Mr. Mark Levitz here again to bring you another lecture video. Today we are starting Unit 6. This is our last unit of the year. We're going to be talking about animated films and experimental films, but let's start this unit by talking about documentary films. Now, what is a documentary film? Well, it's simply a non-fiction film. These films can be instructional, they can be educational, like the one you're hopefully watching right now. Uh, they can be historical or, you know, act as some sort of historical document, or they can just be entertainment, right? Documentaries, at least since the late 1980s, have, have really skyrocketed in popularity, and, uh, you know, that wasn't always the case. Even though, you know, this genre goes back all the way to the early days of cinema with, you know, people like Thomas Edison and the Lumiere brothers, creating what are essentially documentaries, workers leaving the factory and uh, a train arriving at the station, it really wouldn't be, like I said, until the late 1980s with movies like Roger and Me and The Thin Blue Line when, you know, this genre really started to take off. And, you know, I too was bit by the documentary bug, although that was probably more out of desperation than anything else because, you know, these films tend to be a little cheaper to produce, so, uh, you know, I found myself making a lot of documentaries, certainly because I never had any money, and that's what I did. Back in college, I volunteered at my campus news station, News Central 34, and won a couple of uh, national awards. Here's a grand prize best news package at the 42nd annual National Student Electronic Media Competition, and here is an award of distinction presented by the Videographer Awards for uh, a package I did about autumn berries. So I put these over here just sort of out of the way. Um, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was an editor on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette for about three and a half years. I also appeared as a talking head in Best Worst Movie, which is a documentary about a very lovable horror film called Troll 2. Oh my God! I helped edit another documentary called Double Digits, and I even directed a documentary. It's called Is Everybody Happy? It's available for free on YouTube. I'll put the link down below. And uh, yeah, I just sort of went on tour back in 2009 with an indie rock band from Grand Rapids, Michigan called The Bless You Boys. And the idea of our film was to sort of capture this struggling band while they're on the cusp of seemingly larger success. And uh, yeah, I, th I think it was a very honest, heartbreaking, and sort of funny uh, documentary about, you know, people that devote their lives to following their dreams. You should definitely, like I said, watch it. It's down below. Anyway, so with documentaries, you know, most docs are broken down into four parts. You have interviews, voiceover, B-roll, and Nat sound breaks. We're just going to take some time to talk about what these four elements are and how they contribute to documentaries. So interviews, you choose a subject, a subject that you think is interesting, and you want to learn more about that subject, so you conduct an on-camera interview. And I, I strike right into the middle of Wouldn't It Be Nice by the Beach Boys. And I'm thinking, what a horrible, horrible song to have to hear in the midst of this panic attack. And before you do the interview, it's always important that you do proper research. You certainly don't want to ask any questions that could easily be answered by doing a five-minute Google search. Because if that's the case, you're just wasting time. You might only get a few minutes with this person, so it's important that you get the best answers to questions that haven't already been answered before, okay? Also during your research, it's important to ask open-ended questions. You don't want to write a lot of questions that can be responded to with a simple yes or no answer, okay? During the interview, it's important that you and your subject are relaxed, okay? I always start my on-camera interviews by having the person say and spell their name and just sort of have a five-minute conversation with them, assuming that you have that time, right, to sort of get them comfortable, to get them warmed up, and doing this also helps you sort of feel comfortable, because if you go into the interview feeling stiff and nervous and anxious, then that's going to reflect on the person that you're interviewing. 
During the interview, you always want to make sure that your subject is restating the question. So if you ask a question like, you know, what did you do last weekend? You want them to say, last weekend I blank, 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 blank. Having that restated question is really going to help you in the editing process. So it's important that you tell the person that you're interviewing before the interview, in your responses, please restate the questions. Most of the time they'll forget, but you know, a, a gentle reminder is, is fine, right? And during the interview, you're always gonna wanna ask follow-up questions. So you ask your initial question, they start to respond, and while you're listening to that response, you're starting to formulate a response question or a follow-up question in order to get them to elaborate on the initial response. And, and usually, I think the best stuff comes from those follow-up questions. So be listening when your subject is talking and ask yourself, what am I going to follow up with once they've finished this statement? You're going to get some good stuff, promise. Uh, there's also B-roll. B-roll is the supplemental footage that you're going to cut in with your interview. So let's say you have a documentary about someone making sushi. You have the interview of the person talking about their process, and then you're going to cut to B-roll of them actually, you know, making the sushi rolls, whatever it might be. Again, the B-roll is this supplemental footage that you're going to use to help make these interviews come to life, all right? And one of the great things about B-roll is that you can use it to hide edits. Let's say you have a sound bite that starts really strong and ends really strong, but the middle gets a little clunky. Well, you can cut that middle portion out, hide the jump cut with B-roll, and the audience won't notice. And there are, just like with the interviews, some rules that I wrote here, or some tips that I wrote here to help you film B-roll. One, consider your shooting ratio. How much are you actually filming? My advice, shoot way more than you think you're possibly going to use because you don't want to get in the edit bay and realize that you don't have enough footage, okay? So for a TV show like The Bachelor, you know, they'll shoot hundreds if not thousands of hours for a single episode, okay? They need that much footage, no offense, they need that much footage in order to get one solid hour of material. So if you think you're shooting too much, don't worry about it, all right? Only worry if you haven't shot enough, okay? The second tip is to hold your shots. When I was a camera operator, I always held my shots for at least five seconds because if the camera is constantly moving around and it's handheld and you're changing focus and changing your zoom, you're just not gonna have anything to cut to because all of that footage is unusable, okay? My third tip here is to move around. If you're filming, you know, a chef in a restaurant, you're not gonna wanna park your camera and the tripod in some dark corner of the restaurant and only shoot from that vantage point. No, get off of the tripod, get out of that corner, move around and, you know, get a variety of shots, which is my fourth tip here. You don't wanna shoot everything from a wide angle. You don't wanna shoot everything in a medium shot. You don't wanna shoot everything in a close up, right? Get a variety of camera compositions and distances. The third element here is a voiceover. Now we've talked about voiceovers before and how they can be used to improve storytelling, but with a documentary film, these voiceovers can provide clarity, they can condense information, and they can sort of act like a guiding authoritative voice moving the narrative forward. Increasingly, this playground court has become a place to buy and sell drugs. I didn't put a voiceover in my documentary because one, I don't really like the sound of my voice, and two, I wasn't gonna pay an actor to record a voiceover for me, but also, I just didn't think I needed one, okay? Just because these elements are up here doesn't mean that they're all necessarily required for every single documentary, okay? You can have a documentary that's nothing but B-roll, and we're gonna talk about that in the next lecture video. You could probably have a documentary that's nothing but interviews. It would be kind of boring, but you could do it, all right? So, yeah, the voiceover, I didn't think I needed it, and I certainly didn't have the money to hire James Earl Jones or Morgan Freeman, as good as, you know, those guys are. In the harshest place on earth, love finds a way. 
The fourth element here is a natural sound break or a nat sound break where you're just going to sort of let the natural sounds of the environment play for a few moments and let the audience breathe and recompose themselves because you certainly don't want to bombard your audience with nothing but interviews and voiceovers. That's going to get exhausting. You want to give them a chance to breathe and the nat sound break provides that. Your lab assignment for this week, guys, is to record a one minute interview and then cut in appropriate B-roll. So let's say you have a friend that likes to skateboard. So you're gonna interview them on camera, talking about why they love to skateboard, and then you're gonna cut to B-roll footage of them skateboarding. And with an assignment like this, it's very important that you learn how to separate your audio track from your video track because I want to hear their voice from the interview while we're watching B-roll footage of them performing whatever action it is that they're describing or talking about in the interview, okay? If that doesn't make sense, just talk to me in class and I'll explain it further, okay? And finally this week, guys, we are gonna be watching Grizzly Man from 2005. This is a wonderful documentary by Werner Herzog. It's about a man that spent 15 summers up in Alaska living with grizzly bears. And I don't wanna to say too much for the sake of spoilers, but it's a film that I think you guys are really going to enjoy and I'm happy to share it with you. So that's what we'll be watching this week. Email me if you have any questions, guys, or talk to me in class. I will see you in lesson 6.2. Thank you for watching. Bye.